welcome back to Prime 5, the five biggest news stories for Nintendo in the last 24 hours, or as our Monday episode does, it's sort of the five biggest stories from over the weekend. However, a lot of this stuff is actually quite fresh in our minds. We have huge ones today from Splatoon 3 leaking. I know, uh happens every time. Nintendo employees actually paying attention to what fans are doing and saying on the internet and proof of that and so much more. More stuff on Zelda as well. What are you doing? If you enjoy this video, drop a like, subscribe, and let's get into the news. Well, our first story deals with, hey, you know what? Another Switch game has leaked on the internet. Now look, brand new Switch games leak on the internet all the time, and this week we have Splatoon 3 coming out on Friday. So of course, some retailers have broken Street Date, and because Street Date's been broken, we now have this game out in the public. People have been buying it for extra money online. Some people have just been lucky enough that their pre-orders are here early. Uh, it's going to be leaked all over the internet. We're going to know everything about the single player mode. Uh, the whole story is going to leak. It is what it is. Splatoon 3 is just the latest victim of every Switch game in the world leaks. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen when Breath of the Wild 2 leaks. I think it might actually break the internet. We now might know the actual title for the Super Mario Brothers movie. That's right. Remember that Mario movie that's coming out next year starring Chris Pratt and a whole bunch of other star-studded cast members? Well, we have probably know the name of the movie and it makes some sense it's quite simplistic technically it was originally leaked through a new uno set coming out for the mario movie that's just called the super mario bros movie uno right that's just the name of the set that's already been leaked we already know that's true well on illumination's french website it turns out that they actually have the movie listed there by title as Super Mario Brothers. Now, this title hasn't actually been updated on that website for a while because it still has the December release date listed. It doesn't, hasn't, doesn't have the new release date happening in 2023. Still, the original Super Mario Brothers movie that released way back when was just called Super Mario Brothers. We had the Super Mario Brothers Super Show at one point as well. So this movie just being called simply Super Mario Bros., uh, yeah, I, I guess it just sort of makes sense. It's really simple. And, I mean, come on. They just call the Sonic movie Sonic the Hedgehog. So, uh, sure. Yeah, this just makes sense. Now, today I'm happy to talk to you about a brand new game called World of Atena. So, it's coming to Switch and other platforms in 2023. It's an open-world RPG inspired by Skyrim. All, however, you see, it's kind of a sprite style. It's created by 81 Monkeys who have the game on Kickstarter. It's already reached its Kickstarter goal with 18 days to go. Everything in their stretch goals, however, they claim will be their day one. They're not planning for far off content that could need more money down the line to finish. And if you're wondering if this is one of those Kickstarter scams, like it's just an idea of a game, they've actually already been working on the game for three years years. Now here is how they describe the game. They say, a diverse and living world. Explore a vast world with oceans, continents, regions, castles, and towns, mountains, caves, and dungeons. Antera is full of life, from little aspects to hulking creatures. NPCs live out their lives following daily routines, while also responding dynamically to events in the world, as well as the player. The world of Antera is built to be explored freely and at your own pace. It has a deep and inspiring non-linear story. The story and quest follow non-linear divergent paths so you can go where you want and talk to whoever you'd like. Your story will unfold naturally based on the paths you choose to follow. It has conversational dialogue, a unique way to converse with NPCs that allows players to have a more conversational experience with every character in the game. We ditched the overly wordy, linear dialogue experience of modern games and designed a completely new, retro-inspired system. It has fast and fluid party-based combat, leveraging our vast experience across many genres of gaming, including casual and social games. Combat is the designed to be fun no matter how many hours you put in with streamlined UI and engaging feedback, satisfying and accessible user interface. Our design skills really shine here. We have designed an interface with the least amount of UI and words as possible. Instead of menus and lists, we've leveraged true to our world items and intuitive icons to create a wonderful user experience. Our interface is so much fun. It could be a game on its own. They're obviously really excited about it. You've seen some footage. This really excites you. Kind of put this one, maybe jot it down somewhere, something to look forward to next year. Now, have you ever wondered if Nintendo employees are paying attention to us? I know I have. I know we know all about the Nintendo ninjas that supposedly go out there and shut down certain things that they don't like being out there in maybe some very interesting ways. But we're not talking about the ninjas. Actual high-end Nintendo game producers 
are apparently paying attention to what the hell we're saying. How do we know about this? Well, thanks to none other than Emily Rogers, famed insider. She used to work at a place called Reset Era, which was a spinoff board from NeoGAF when NeoGAF's owner was going through some controversies. And at Reset Era, all of your accounts have to be approved manually and you have to verify who you are so if you're a game developer if you're a content creator you have to verify all of that to get your account approved and apparently several nintendo employees high up nintendo game producers are on reset era because emily rogers herself had to approve and verify those accounts now it was funny to her because people would be in game threads arguing with a game producer of said game and calling them idiots and not even realizing that they're actually arguing with the very person who does know what they're talking about. Now, this is because naturally the Nintendo employees didn't want it to be known publicly who they were. This is just to you know create that, that degree of separation between the fans and Nintendo and obviously make sure that anything they say can't just be traced back to Nintendo and all of a sudden Nintendo looks like a bad guy. So yeah, there was a degree of separation, but still Nintendo employees were directly and still are directly interacting with fans on Reset Era. But also it was hinted that that's not the only place that Nintendo's doing this. They're doing this on Twitter. They're doing this on YouTube. They're watching YouTube videos videos and commenting on those YouTube videos and responding to comments on those YouTube videos and reading all of those comments as well. And not just on the big boys, like say beat em ups or game explain or whatever. They're actually going all the way down to sub 100,000 YouTube channels. I've actually heard all the way down as low as 10,000 subscriber YouTube channels. They are whatever comes across their way. They are well, commenting and paying attention and listening to what content creators have to say. Now, how much of an impact all of us have collectively on the direction of games, I don't know. But if it ever sounds like, oh man, Nintendo is listening to us, maybe it's because they were listening to us when they give us something that we want. Kind of crazy, right? So imagine that we're talking right now about Nintendo employees watching videos as they're watching my video right now. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? So, hey, you know, maybe next time you're arguing with someone on the internet about Nintendo stuff, realize you might be arguing with somebody who actually works at the big end. And our last story deals with a brand new batch of rumors surrounding Breath of the Wild 2. All these rumors come from Game Over Jesse, and yeah, they, you know, put your tinfoil hats on, do whichever you need to do. I'm not even saying believe them, they're rumors. I can't verify any of this. Heck, it doesn't seem Jesse can verify any of it. So let's dive into what he revealed in his latest video. So, Breath of the Wild 2 will have a trailer at the next Nintendo Direct that will have new gameplay and cinematics showing off new abilities, items, and locations from the original Breath of the Wild that have been updated or changed. The ending of the trailer will have the official title and a release date. They will tease more information that will be coming soon. So supposedly this information that we're getting in September was supposed to happen in June. There's actually going to be a second direct in January with a new trailer, new game updates, and new Zelda amiibo. They claim this would be a Zelda only direct, though the direct hasn't been finalized yet and could just end up being turned into a series of social media drops throughout January. However, they are planning a Treehouse live event showcasing the game at the end of January or early February. Now, the source on this for me is Game Over Jesse, but he actually went and gave his opinions on this. And what he admitted to is that he combined multiple sources together on this. Some of them are known and reputable, such as Jeff Grubb. Obviously, we know about this since he's the one who told us about the game title possibly getting revealed. But he does note that he does think that all of this combined is just too much exact information for it all to be real in his mind. Not that some of it doesn't hold some truth. Rumors are what they are. It's just important to remember in situations like this that Jesse is just sharing the information that he's seen reported out there, combined with some people contacting him privately. He doesn't really know if any of it's real. He just thinks it's interesting to talk about. We should start seeing a ramp up for Breath of the Wild 2 if it is coming this spring, very soon, maybe even starting with this direct. So... This information could all be cool. It could all be real. It could also be fake. I have no idea. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubble Jance from Nintendo Prime. Guys, thank you so much for supporting the channel and enjoying these episodes. I'll catch you in the next video.